Joe wants to invest in ultra-risky stocks which either do very well or collapse to zero. He only has $500 to his name and his strategy is simple. He buys using the full $500 and only sells if the share price triples. Otherwise, he just holds the shares even all the way down to zero. There are only two possible outcomes. He either gets back $1,500 or loses all his money. For the sake of simplicity, we'll ignore trading fees, taxes, and so on. Let's assume he gets it right and now has $1,500. He might set $1,000 aside and once again invest $500. He might set half aside and invest the rest, etc. There are a lot of risk and money management strategies to choose from. If he got it wrong, however, guess what? Risk and money management strategies become pointless because, well, he doesn't have any money left. The simplest approach would be thinking of the risk of ruin as the risk of losing everything. Some investors have adapted this quote-unquote definition and instead of everything, say you risk losing more than you can realistically make back, more than you can tolerate, and variations thereof. Calculating the probability of ruin can sometimes be very simple, like saying that in Joe's case, it would be 50% if he were to flip a coin rather than invest in risky stocks. In most cases, however, it gets complicated and can be done through various models which factor in anything from past performance to industry or asset-specific data points. The bottom line is this. Regardless of how or even whether or not you calculate the probability of ruin, you'd be irresponsible as an investor by not at least thinking about the risk of ruin every now and then.